Welcome to Cooking with Nene and Murray. Today's episode brought to you by the rain. <laughs> it's pouring down rain and in keeping with lovely Georgia weather, the humidity is about 98% right now. No, it's 100. Uh, yeah. It's 100. Well, it feels like 98. <laughs> but, um, it's a wet heat. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all be watching this tonight at 7.30. I'm cooking with Nene and Murray. <laughs> We're filming it this morning over here at my brother Randall's house. It's about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, something like something that. Something like that. Something. Don't even know what time of day it is anymore. Or what day of the week it is. That's right. What is today? Tuesday? It's Thursday. Thursday. I do know it's Thursday because it's time for cooking with Nene and Murray. <laughs> but anyway, this now this episode is really brought to you by the Kegel Reunion. Now, Kegel Reunion is uh, something all of us boys grew up but taking a part of, and probably throughout the day today, each and each one of us will be telling you know, one of our favorite Kegel Reunion stories. The Kegel Reunion started back with uh, all my dad's brothers and sisters, um, what sixty something years ago. Papa's brothers. And yeah, Papa, my my Papa's brothers and sisters, and uh, so it, it's uh, the rest of the years, and we we never. I mean, we look forward to it every year, and, and Daddy took us from the time we was old enough to walk, and we, we we cooked all day on Saturday, cooked barbecue on an open pit, and um, cooked a big old. Daddy made the homemade sauce and, and made stew, and so uh, it's it's kind of progressed over the years. The stew and saw everybody's kind of tweaked and made made it their own, and um, the, the sauce has kind of got handed down to my younger brother Stephen and and uh, huh. <laughs> making the stew for the last several years and Dad kind of turned it over to him. But, uh, anyway, it's all script. And with that said, we're going to get started. We're going to, like I say, this is going to be kind of different one of our live shows. We're going to be taping and cutting and putting everything back together and hope it, throw it in the pot and hope it comes out to a decent uh, show for y'all to enjoy and learn how to make Kegel barbecue sauce and brunch stew. And uh, I'm a Kegel. You're a Kegel. Wouldn't you, you like, like to be a Kegel, kegel too? too? So, without further ado, ado, come on, Stan. Daniel, Stinkin, Randall. How about Stephen? I don't know. All right, Stephen's going to make the sauce. Hey, Stephen. Hey. hey. Yeah. Come on in here. All right. Well, I'll be the All right. I'm assuming that we're going to post the recipe. We are. Even though, you know, according to some people, the, the folklore of the Kegel family is it was some secret, you know, Kegel recipe. And come to find out, really probably it wasn't. So, anyway. Um, it's not anymore, is it? No. What's your favorite college uh, football team? <laughs> huh? It ain't Georgia. So. Well, wonder who that is. Uh, yeah. You know what? Say something about this. Oh, this forgive us with all this traffic noise going on behind us. Huh? Randall lives on the expressway. Yeah, Randall, they live on the bypass here. The, used to be old dirt road when they first moved in. Now it's a bypass. Oh, it's always been pretty good. But if you watch Gardner, <laughs> if you watch Gardner with Randall, you already know about the the car noise. Yeah, from the road here. All right, Steve. Let's anyway, go. so we're gonna post the recipe, and it is the recipe as it was given. Oh, there. Lord have yeah. mercy. You know how we always start out a show with one of our Her menagerie. menagerie. Today it's deer horn. 
Today it's Randall's menagerie stuff. We're not putting any deer meat in the stew no, or anything not, like that, even no. though that's not uncommon Wait, to do down here in the south. Not, Bambi was not harmed before this show. No, not it was Bambi's year, mom. Not this year. Uh, anyway, the barbecue sauce, we're going to post a recipe as it was written down back in the day when I remember going over to uh, the community center over Rainway. at Rainway, uh, which is now a public shopping center, I think. Um, over at the intersection of King Road and Crossville. Crossville. Yeah. And Woodstock. Yeah. Woodstock. Uh, Woodstock. Yeah. They, it was, uh, we'd wake up at the crack of dawn, go over to the sausage company and pick up the meat and go over and there'd be some cousins already had the fire going. And sometime in the morning, we would all get there in the kitchen and daddy would start prepping to make the barbecue sauce. And I remember being a part of that when I was itty bitty and he would never let me use a knife or anything, but then for the rest, I kind of got into doing this. And so we got the sauce recipe, and this is for a single. Because he let me use the knife and see what happened. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lord. So we're going to I had get, no idea you were such a comedian. We're, we're going to get started. And just so you know, when you read the recipe online, there ain't no specific order you have to put this stuff in. It's just, it's all going in a pot and it makes sauce when it's all said and done. Now, it says right on there that one medium onion makes like just a single recipe. Now for the Kegel barbecue, we, you know, we had to make enough to feed a couple hundred people. So we made four times the recipe, six times the recipe. So we're gonna do a double recipe today. So I've used two onions. I got one already cut up. Now back in the day, before we had fancy machines like food processors, we chop it up by hand. But nowadays, <laughs> I put it in a food processor along with the two cloves of garlic that it needs. So two medium onions, two cloves of garlic been in here, and it basically made onion soup. So, and you, you'll see. A pureed onion here. Now pour a little bit of that water in there and we'll rinse that out. Right. Now, right. and it's funny because in the recipe it says two cups of water. I know. <laughs> so, but I never, I never saw Daddy measure out the two cups of water and pour in, or the six cups, whatever we were using, because we always use the water to rinse out our cans. Dinner. Yeah, and he said by the time it's all over and done with, there'd be two cups in there. So we'll figure that one out here in a second. You can throw that for you. All right. So, all right. Get that out. Get that out. All right. And since we're going ahead and let's see if we can do this without losing any limbs. Lord. Thanks. Yeah. Let's see. We don't uh, see them, but just squeeze it in there. All right. It's just us eating it. Yeah. Oh, there's a seed in there. Oh, there's two seeds in there. Lord, don't you have cheesecloth for that? I do. I'm gonna do it like the chefs do on TV. You know, they they, they do it into their hands. Hopefully they didn't scratch your butt right before they did it, like I did. So <laughs> I'm really glad there wasn't a car going by then. Because I would hate for that to have gotten missed. What? Your butt comment. You're trying to squeeze it and sneeze it. Yeah. <laughs> squeezing and sneezing. Alright, so it said uh, the recipe calls for one half of a lemon. Well, we're doing double recipe, so I used a whole lemon. Whole lemon. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, now. There's all kinds of spices that go into this, but some of them are really thick, coarse spices. So to keep from having to strain it out, we wrap those in a cloth that can, let me use the big word of the day, can, the sauce can permeate. Well, nowadays I use cheesecloth. But back in the day, we just used a hopefully clean t-shirt. And, well, I'm just saying it may or may not have been clean. Yeah. Or old pillow case. Yeah. So since we're trying to do this on Kegel tradition, we're going to use t-shirts today. All right, so 
Just get a big old rectangle, square, or something. Oh, well, don't point that knife at him. Well, it wouldn't be the first time you probably held a knife at me, so. <laughs> Poor old stinking. These slow darts at him. That's probably true, too. No wonder. I, anyway. This is I starting to make sense. Poor boy. Unmerciful when they we were children. And I, I kind of feel bad about it now. Kind of. Not, 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 not really. Uh, kind of. Kind of. But if he, if he, you know what? It'd make him feel worse if he wasn't. But he's adopted, so it don't really. <laughs> and you See, mean, that's what used to read. Mama! Mason said, I'm adopted! But he. <laughs> Just so we know. Being adopted, is, being adopted is a good thing, absolutely. Oh, there's plenty of people that have been adopted and they're happy. Turned out good, see? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, ironically, through, through, through the, through the uh, you know, the, what, what's it called? DNA, it's been proven that they were lying. I am actually a Kegel yeah. and a Parker. Yeah, so. he is. Uh, anyway, all right, so this is pickling spice, and as you can kind of see, it's really coarse, and it's got... Do I need to come and show them that, or... Yeah, if you want to... I mean, it's got old peppercorns in it, and... Yeah, just put it all in there. I know, it was just down at the bottom, but... What you need next? Calls for a tablespoon. We need the, the celery seeds and the celery flakes. There's some celery flakes. I'll try to find the seed while you're doing that. All right, now the celery seed, if you look at them, they're probably not too, too thick, but as Daddy said, nobody wants so grainy, you know, seeds. So yeah, we you got always, that right. So we always put them in here. And, uh, and then uh, the bay leaves. Bay leaves. Now you can see those look like a just, I mean, they're not super coarse, but you probably wouldn't want that on and you. crawl. Yeah. Underneath your dentures. Ooh, that's true. <laughs> How many bay leaves you need? It says four to six, four so we need, we need about 10 in there. Two, Two. three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. All right, and if I'm not mistaken, that's all of the course. All right, I'm gonna go back to my spot. Uh oh, yeah. Pick this up. Now we being real high tech here and using uh, cooking right. cooking string. This kind of takes off. Yeah. You know, back in the day. That's funny. Because when I wrote up the instructions, I used that back in the day. Because the way Daddy wrote it was a bottle of ketchup, a bottle of Tabasco sauce. Um, it wasn't different sizes. Yeah. Back then, you know, back in the 50s when Daddy first started cooking this, you know, you'd probably go to the grocery store and the only thing you could buy was a 10 ounce or a 14 ounce bottle of ketchup. Or maybe you could probably buy it by a gallon. So, but. Mm -hmm. Let me try to put that off. Ah, yeah. Oh, Lord. This could be a finger loss <laughs> right here. Or a stab. Uh oh, we're losing herb. Oh, no, not herb. 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 Lord, I'm losing your spices. Sorry. Yeah. It'll be good enough. Yeah. There we go. So it's in there. All right. So now we need a tablespoon of black pepper. There we go. Now, according to how much you really like black pepper, you can cut down on this, but I'm not going to. So. We need red pepper. Cayenne. Cayenne? 
I bet. The name like that? All right, celery salt. Celery salt. There's a lot of celery in this, I noticed. Yeah. Probably my least favorite vegetable. But, but, but I put celery salt, celery seed, celery flake in my chicken and dumpling. Yeah. I know. Mm. I know. All right. And as you can tell, we're really being very precise with our measurement on that. So. What's next? Uh, we got paprika. A, we got a can opener not behind me. Right. Paprika. All right, now for whatever reason, everything else in this was tablespoons, but the paprika was teaspoon. Hmm. And honestly, paprika it, it, it doesn't have like a, a real strong peppery taste to it, so you probably could put. Two tablespoons in it, and it adds to the color. It actually adds a lot of color to it. All right, so that's right behind you. Oh, trash can right behind. Me. Okay. So we got a can of tomato paste, but in this one we're doing double, so two cans of tomato paste. And again, we'll use our water to rinse those out a little bit. Before y'all get that all mixed up, I'm going to get a good shot of the pot on the inside. Mm. Pot, a pot shot. A pot shot. Take a pot shot. I'll mm. take a pot shot. What's your name now? All right. We need Worcestershire sauce. Now, Easy for you to say. Again, there's been a run on Worcestershire sauce, I heard. Kind of like wine and Yeah. Now, I remember, this is one of the things I do remember from back this is we always got the Lee and Perrin because it was wrapped into paper and uh, so I've always used Lee and Perrin for the most part unless I can just get Kroger brand cheaper but for this we're using Lee and Perrin because I'm trying to make it authentic. These little things on top you can just pop them things off. I do remember them not coming out as easy as these do. Well so, back, in the day, back in the day the bottle just had a, a hole in it. It was glass all the way but it didn't have to be. Yeah. Kind of like um, Tabasco is. And then after we do the Worcestershire sauce, we got. Uh, Good to the last drop. Yeah. Oh. And one yeah. thing I didn't bring because I figured being at Uncle Randall's house, we might have a little bit, is uh, honey. 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 Hey, honey, can I we have some honey? honey Say hey. I'll be right back. All right. We'll be right the here. Honey, the honey, hole. <laughs> honey, hole. honey hole. What you got now there, stinking? This is chili sauce. How about that? How about that? Which, it sits right on the shelf at the store next to bottled cocktail sauce. And ironically enough, it's the same thing. <laughs> I mean, with the exception of maybe one or two ingredients, it really is the same thing. I mean, you're eating it, got... Horseradish and tomato puree and onions and all that kind of stuff in it. So. There, she's over a dance. Yeah. So calls for well, a half a calls for a half a bottle. But we're using the whole. Because guess why? We've doubled the recipe. We've yeah. doubled the recipe. So we're going. I'm going to go ahead and get this Tabasco yeah. open for you. Which it called for a bottle of Tabasco, which back in the day they only came in them little. Little bitty, little See, bitty two ounces. These are glass all the way up. They don't have the little things. But, uh, there, you open it, you pull that one, and I pull this. One. So, as you can tell, this is a really fast process here. <laughs> we'll be here for a minute. Wow. Well, now, look who came back from the honey hole. Unscathed. And if you've ever caught gardening with Randall, you seen his beekeeping episodes which is pretty they're pretty interesting if you hadn't watched one of them which I had never watched him do bees much it was pretty interesting but here's a 
You can have your honey and eat it too. Is this uh is this privet hedge honey or is this uh clover yeah. honey or yeah. is this sourwood? Yeah. Honey? yeah. 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 Sourwood blooms in the fall, don't it? Right. No, it's summer brown folk. Oh god. Oh, oh. god. Wow. Well. I got back in my Yeah. Fourth Fourth of July. <coughs> Randall? <coughs> you remember that time at station number eight? <laughs> Man Randall both retired firefighters. And, and Captain Wilbanks. <laughs> I'm the one that did it. I feel bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Do, but I no. can tell how bad you feel because you're laughing. Well, I had a bottle of the bass going on where Will Banks was doing some, and I was, I was, I was cutting up, and I went like, "Come out!" And like I was spraying holy water. Well, the, the cap on the Tabasco came off when I went yak, and it went all in his eyes, and his mouth, and his face. And I thought I was going to get fired. <laughs> or my ass. <laughs> <laughs> or my butt beat. <laughs> well, we just went from a PG to a X. Wow. PG 17 this, or something. We can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. But anyway. Y'all worked at a firehouse. I'm sure there was worse words than that said. But anyway. So you had a job. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everybody else was laughing besides me and and uh, and Cam Wilbanks. Everybody else thought it was funny. But anyway, well, getting back well. to the recipe, uh, it calls for a half a cup of salt for a recipe. And as you can see, I'm not putting a whole cup of salt. Uh, Everything's got salt in it. Ketchup got yeah. salt in it. The how much you, got salt How much in. are you putting? I put about two thirds of the cup. Okay. I mean, you, you want it to be salty, but you don't want it to be like salty. So, um, all right. So we got. Oh, we need uh, a, a cup of honey. Cup of well, you know what? Let's do the sugar first. So sugar and honey. Now, here's where, if you want to get real fun and creative and kind of sweeten up the sauce a little bit, you can. Um, I, I use brown sugar, you know, and it just adds a little bit of extra sweetness to it. I made some one time, cagarine and sauce, and put sorghum syrup in it. And I've, I've used molasses in it instead of honey before because I got a daughter who's vegan and apparently born is vegan. Because it is or is not? It is not. Uh, how many ounces is this? That's a pint. 16 ounces. 16, 16 ounces. How many? About a half of this? Yes. We need Ooh, 8 ounces. Oh, I can smell all that. Maybe some onions? I smell a little bit of everything, I believe. Yeah, it might yeah. be a little bit more, but well, you, you don't have COVID then, do you? Huh? You don't have COVID then, do you? I don't reckon I do. Okay. All right. Then uh, we already got the garlic in there, we got the chili sauce, we got the honey, we got sugar. All right, so now right, we vinegar. need vinegar. Now Make here's, chill. it calls for a whole quart of vinegar per recipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're only gonna put one quart in it for this whole recipe because it can get really vinegar. But again, according to your taste, if you wanna make this, you put the whole quart in it. Some people like it to be a little thinner, they like it to be more vinegary. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I don't mind vinegar, so, but I know when we've made this for the table reunion, I, I've heard everything from, that's too vinegar, that's too hot, that's too Let's salty. take a look at that. Yeah, take a look at it. How about that? Yeah. Go and then, on. last but not least is one bottle of ketchup. Not last, we got Oh, ketchup. that's right. But... I will tell you, if you make this recipe as per the recipe, that, that sounded stupid. Well. Anyway, it will be as hot <laughs> as, oh my God. <laughs> hot as what? Yeah, it's just uh, putting that in. Hot as, <laughs> hot as a $2 pister. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> so, to make this about right, put two bottles of ketchup I put in two big bottles of ketchup in it. <laughs> I'm putting the second bottle in there. So I'm like, 
And I will say, according to who you're making it for and how what their their love of spice level is, is um, you might put more ketchup in it when it's all said and done. So it. Uh, Dad would always add an extra half a gallon. When he's like, okay. Yeah. So, as you can see, we're doing our high tech jar cleaning. Redneck jar cleaning. Now, if you grew up with a frugal mama, she may have put water in the ketchup bottle like that anyway when it got down to the bottom to make it go a little further. I don't know if I really remember our mama doing that or not. How many parquets? Put one stick per recipe, so we're gonna put two sticks in here. Do we have to use parquet, or do you can you use butter? I don't know. We always use parquet. Okay. I mean, you use butter, but I just remember that's parquet. what mama. That's what mama. Parquet. 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 Butter. Yeah. I just remember. Oleo. Oleo. That's yeah. a that's a work blast from the past. Oleo. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember mama always buying parquet. I guess you want to save these bottles to put sauce in. Yeah. So, it's done. No, we got to heat it up. That's right. Sorry. Right. Hold on. Let me get the camera over. Now, from this point, you're going to put it on a, a medium heat. You don't want to put this thing on a real high heat. And you want to warm it up nice and slow to where it gets just where it's nice and simmering. The way I always see is, it starts getting kind of a froth on the top of it and you stir it and you, you do that for about 30 to 45 minutes you don't really have to cook this for a long time because all you want to do is just get all the ingredients nice and hot and melted together married married together there you go married married, married. married. you get it all married together and then because the magic happens after that you just let it sit in the pot and that's where it really starts getting the flavor into it all right put it on the stove Oh, that's why he, he's going to light this eye uh, lit. Mm -hmm. okay. This is what we cook on at the Kager reunion is these, uh, these eyes. And the Kager reunion's held at Bowling Springs, Friendly Baptist Church, which is 1200 Birmingham Road in the city of Mexico. And Randall just happens to be the pastor there. And yeah. everybody's welcome at 1030 on Sunday mornings. We're open for business, and you're welcome to come worship your Lord and Savior, and Jesus Christ with us, and Lord's Christ. You're open for business, and Sunday. business is good, right? That's right. Yeah. And, uh, but we have, like, we started out at the Cable Reunion. Well, it started out at, one of the brothers' houses, and they rotated through the brothers. All my grand, all my great uncles. It, it rotated through the great uncles and some of the great aunts, and then so they finally came up. I guess Greenway was that the first place they went. That's when when Papa's family did it, and, and Papa found that place. And um, so they went to Greenway, and. Um, Stayed at Greenway until I was, I was already married and on the fire corps, but it was up, you know, in the 80s, I guess. I want to say it was right before I graduated high school when we moved over to... Providence Park. Yep. And it's been in several places since then. But anyway, Bowling Springs, because that's where the cables, I mean, that's our heritage is Bowling Springs, Friend of Baptist Church. Um, my, my grandfather and all... His kids just about just you know went to Bowling Springs. My dad was a member there, baptized there, and was ordained there, and 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 died there as a member. He came back once before he passed away and served as an interim pastor and and was kind of associate pastor there until he passed away. So Bowling Springs is kind of near and dear to the cable. And uh, so, but anyway, we got us a pit. Wider angle in. We got us a pit. We got us a shed. Come on. Well, we're going to fix start a stew. So yeah, Stan's going to get over here and grind this meat. And uh, but anyway, that's where our permanent home is now. And we've got the fellowship hall. We got picnic tables outside. 
This grand time is the, the what weekend? It's the fourth weekend in October, and it's going to be moved this year. We're going to do it all on Saturday, right. October 24th. <clears throat> so, so come on Saturday. We're going to get up early. And even if you're not a kegel, if you want to come eat some good barbecue and hang out with a, with a, with a good family, y'all come up there the fourth Saturday of October. Get up there around lunchtime or come up there and watch us cook. You know, we cook that morning. We cook a bunch of... Um, I think it's, fourth, it's the third... It's the Saturday before the fourth Sunday. Saturday before the fourth because Sunday. the fourth Saturday will be Halloween. On the Let's get us a date. Right. So, well, we are going to come back. Anyway, we're going to... We're gonna reset the, the the stage here and when we come back, we're gonna be back to Bronner's too. Welcome back to cooking with Nene and Murray. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> Although Murray's not cooking much in this episode. Murray he? never cooks. <laughs> yeah, you did you cook um, Sir, sweet bread. bread. You cook strawberry pie. And she boiled water. And she boiled water. Did you burn it? I will not answer that question. But anyway, Based upon bound, grounds of incrimination. But uh, we're back. We got all the brothers up here now. We got Stan, Stanley, Randall, Stephen, Nathan. We Who? We're just being filmed in, our live, in front of the live studio audience. Yes, let's take a look at who our live studio audience we consists of. Hey. Say hey, Matthew. Matthew just got your driver's license. Yes. Yep, so stay off the road for a little while. And we have the lovely assistant of you, Randall from Randall assistant. the Gardener. Or Gardening with Randall, sorry. My beautiful assistant. His beautiful assistant. She so there we go. Name, she's just a beautiful assistant. So we're back. We're making stew. And uh what was that? I can't hear you. We're back, we're making stew. We got all this lovely background noise behind us here, so And we're not professionals, so we don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> we need to buy a little microphone. Well yeah. turn it look Bluetooth microphones, the set of Bluetooth microphones are like almost three hundred and ninety nine dollars. For Facebook Live, and getting to work with Facebook Live. Anyway, but that's a different story. <laughs> We're gonna turn this back over. We're gonna turn it over to Randall right now. He made, he's the stew maker at the Cable Reunion, and uh, we're just gonna be his sous chef, his assistants, his little maid, nurse, whatever. We're just gonna help him out. So, okay. all right, Randall. Tell us, Randall, when we make this stew. Murray is going to show you the recipe that we make every year at the Kegel Reunion over on the grease board. So what? There we go. They've got four gallons of corn, four gallons of tomatoes, four gallons of ketchup, one gallon of broth, one gallon of barbecue sauce, Lipton onion soup, Worcestershire sauce, and 40 pounds of meat. 10 pound chicken, 10 pound pork, 10 pound beef, and 10 pound of turkey. All ground. All ground up. And that goes into making the Brunswick stew. But what we are doing today is... And just so you know, the recipe you're seeing, it's 25 to 30 gallons. That's if you got to feed a oh, big reunion. old wad of people. Big old wad of cables. Yeah. And what you got to know is we make enough that people carry gallons home with them. That's right. <laughs> uh, so what I've done with that recipe, I have divided it by a 12, or point one two five for all of you that knows decibels. Yes, you know he's a mathematical genius, didn't you? <laughs> I can cipher. Not plus not, not equals, equals not. not. See, Lord. see, I learned that from Jethro Bodine when he was a double naught spy. And, and, uh, and, and if y'all don't know what that is, y'all go back and watch Beverly Hillbillies. Anybody under 40 years old, probably, we just lost them all right yeah. there. So. <laughs> but anyway, so what we're going to do today, we've got Gertrude here. Gertrude has volunteered her life for the stew. And 
so she'll be she'll be uh, ground up here in just a minute. Yeah, and uh, and the thing about it is that uh, when she was alive, did she give eggs? It was a donation, but she made a commitment for us today. That's right. Just gotta let her know. And I think there's something I found up in here. Let's see what that. Is. Lord. Oh, oh, there's some giblets. Gibble turkey. I mean, a chicken neck. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to take this little old bird. We're going to take her skin and her tail off. I hear, I hear some birds like really That's mad cool. out there about That's that. That's that. Cool. About that chicken, now, I think. Let me just tell you. Back in the day, when when we was making stew, when Daddy was making stew. Random, I mean, Stephen mentioned there, we'd get up early on a Saturday morning and go to Jim Eaters and Sausage, uh, Sausage Company up in Crab Apple. And we'd pick up, uh, we picked up green hams in. I'm talking about big old hams. Eight, 16 to 18 and sometimes 20 pound hams. fresh hams. I heard you say green hams. Fresh. 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 Hadn't been cured. Just right off the hog. Right off the hog, they call green ham. Probably a couple of days. I don't eat <laughs> green eggs and ham. Yeah. Probably the day before we picked from. them no, up. No, it's not. That's eggs. This is ham. Yeah. Oh. So probably the day before we picked them up, they were still squealing. So. But, uh, and then Daddy, for the students, all our animal rights friends, would always get Jim to save him a hog's head. And we'd have a big old hog head. And I can just remember just like it was yesterday. There was a, I think it was probably a stump or something out there in the yard at Greenway. And Dad put that hog head on there and take an axe. He'd wash the axe and get the dog cleaned up and sterilized and everything. And he'd chop that hog head right down the middle. He pulled the brains out and put them in a bowl. Because the next morning when we got him up there to cut up meat, we always cook breakfast. And all the old guys, they'd have scrambled eggs and brains, all the daddy's cousins and uncles and everything. I never cared for scrambled eggs and brains very much. No. How about y'all? Yeah, it no. tastes pretty good. No. 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 And uh, no. I had enough no. brains already. But then Excuse me? That, I had enough brains already. But uh, anyway, you put that in the big old pot, and, and uh, some of the cousins would bring rabbit. And back in the day, and, and venison, and squirrel, and turtle, it, turtle, and they put all that in the pot. And that's what Brunswick stew was just a mixture of meats you had left over. And but, but today in modern times, and all the people would just do chicken, pork, beef, and turkey. But that was a, that was some good old. Okay, thing. that was stand out. What we do next while we're telling stories? Do I need to come over? Stan's gonna come over here and operate. Stan's going to crank. Stan's going to crank the, the grinder. Is this going to be loud? No, it's just a hand grinder. All right, Stan, you got a favorite Kager reunion story while you grind the meat? <laughs> yeah. Uh uh. Would, it's, <laughs> it's got to look at me. You got to look at. We would. Uh, Let's we, even get over here. Do this while you're. We would cook the hog head at about. Three or four o'clock in the afternoon, things started turning off the bone. And I can remember Uncle Lewis coming out there and stirring it with that to keep it stirred. And the hog tongue floated to the top. And he reached down there and got the hog tongue and a butcher knife and split that thing in half and skipped the hog tongue and got two pieces of bread and some barbecue sauce and had a hog tongue sandwich. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No. And you know what? I wouldn't eat anything that came out of a hog's mouth. But I'd love to have a fried egg sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I will let them think about that for yeah. a minute. All right. All right. All right. I was thinking. I got it. All right. Hey, you, got a, you got a favorite Kager reunion story you'd like to share? Besides your backside? My best side. Terry would agree with that. Maybe. So, um, she'd probably agree that I'm a backside most of my time. So. Oh, 
touche. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know if I have a favorite. I just remember when I was younger, I mean, I'd get excited. It was probably the only day of the year that I was excited to get up before the crack of dawn. Oh, yeah. I mean, and we'd all get up and we'd get, uh, I just remember it was that, it was one of those days when all of us boys were together with daddy. <laughs> oh, honey. And just, uh, just remembering, because I think most of the time we were probably grabbing a Pop-Tart or a toast them or whatever it was to head out the door, because Mama wasn't going to get up and fix us breakfast that early. But um, I do remember occasionally she'd make some biscuits the night before, and yeah, you know, we'd, we'd have a biscuit or something heading out the door. But just, I don't know, the whole experience. And it changed as we got older because... It just seemed like Daddy was going to the, you know, to eat your sausage company we were getting at, and as you changed, you know, somebody else was getting the meat. But it was always just still look forward to that 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 Saturday morning. And still do. Yeah. To this day. It was, uh, and I know, you know, some of the younger, some of our our youngins, they they don't get that excitement. But I mean, we we just always did. It was just something we looked forward to that. That third weekend, fourth weekend, and uh, um, yeah, I know I need to get back to my sauce. Uh, and playing football on the front yard at Greenway uh, on Sunday on slope. afternoon. Oh, no. that yard sloped yes. down. Oh, my right. goodness. So, third cousins. So now, as soon as uh, Stinking gets out of the way, we'll bring the camera <coughs> over to see what we've got going in the pot. We've mm -hmm. already. You get a picture of the stew too. Oh, well, the hold sauce. on, I, I thought you wanted me to show the meat. Oh, well, here, get a, get a picture of the sauce real quick that we made earlier. How it's starting to get hot and come together. And in a minute, I'll, I'll get Murray to bring it back over and I'll show you how I said it kind of gets frothy from where it starts bubbling. And that's when you know it's really starting to get good and married okay, together. Get out of Oh, Lord, Lord. Boy, I know where Nathan gets. I know where Nathan gets all this bossiness from. Here, I'm gonna move over here. I'm, I'm, I'm having a okay. hard time getting over here. Now, the ground beef that I cook, I cook uh, in in this recipe today. I had uh, I had six pounds, three pound of ground beef and three pounds of chicken. I when I cooked the chicken, I boiled it with an envelope of uh, Lipton onion soup, and I saved a quarter of the broth for the stew. And the drippings from the from the uh, ground beef, I did in the, the other envelope of the Lipton onion soup, and I saved all the drippings to put in here. So now I'm gonna. I've, I've already got the beef going. We'll add the chicken and we need and we're doing two cans of whole kernel corn. The key to this is pour all that juice off the whole kernel corn. You don't want that. You drain it. Drain it. Drain it. So we've already got one can in there. Yeah, we got one can and then I got these uh stewed tomatoes, the petite. So we've already got a can of those in already, so it's two cans of each. Now we put ketchup, and I won't put quite on th this ketchup. And I didn't know we were behind. So I get it, ketchup behind. <laughs> it's a baby joke. Is it? Mm -hmm. Even as a baby. <laughs> Little bitty baby. Even Ooh, I know man, that one. That's sad that you know that. I know. Y'all yeah, uh, yeah. just sit around and talk about all the ways you tormented me when I was a kid. Well, I have to say, I have She's gotten on, to, I have been on now, your side. How much does it say that I'm putting uh, barbecue sauce a on? A gallon? That? No, no. Not, that's oh. on the big one. Oh, the little piece of paper over there. Hey! How you doing? Oh, they're backing in here? Okay. 16 ounces. 
16 ounces, and what do you get another so day? Shoulder in the Sure and tell me, that's the barbecue sauce that y'all made? Yes, yes. Prior to, this is what Stephen is also making. Stephen made some And I want to tell everybody, the key to Brunswick stew is your broth, your seasoned broth, and the barbecue sauce. Now, if I don't have Kegel barbecue sauce and I'm just making it for church or something like that, I just use bought barbecue sauce. This is what flavors the stew. And this is what makes kegel stew, kegel stew. Mm -hmm. So we use kegel sauce. And now, this is the FedEx man, y'all. Turn the fire up. Fire up. Now, come over here and look in the and look in the pot. Lord, I got y'all's feet. About that. Yeah. Now, all this needs to do is cook. Really, for about about an hour, it needs to cook because everything in here is already cooked. You just need to cook it all together. Marry those flavors. Marry those flavors. And one thing about it, you've got to be stirring it. If you let stick. this, and it scorches, and it will scorch really, really easy. And when it does, you just run the whole back. You did what? Let me, run. You did run it? Let me, run. Run. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about the year. Oh yeah. This is back. I was probably a teenager. Uh, They'd always cook the, the stew meat the day before, and, and they'd leave it out. Uh, they wouldn't refrigerate. It. Yeah, we yeah yeah, but uh, but we didn't cool it before we put it in the refrigerator. Ah, uh, okay. we we'd always we we'd cook. We had that great big pot. It'd have the hog head, chicken, turkey, and all this meat in there, and then we'd get it all out and grind it all up. And this year, we didn't let it cool enough. It was still hot. Then we put it in the refrigerator, mm. and it soured overnight. Mm. We got there the next morning to make the stew, and you opened up that refrigerator, and it was nasty. Well, I remember so, it was long enough. It, there weren't no Sunday open. Well, no, Daddy had to call, or Mama had to call uh, Reeves, uh, Oh, Mr. Reed. She called all the Reed down at Reed Supermarket. And uh, and me and uh, um, Huey Cagle took, went, took off down to Reed. He met us down Good there. Town. Oh. Yeah, met us down there on a Sunday oh. morning and opened up. And we bought every gallon can of Bronger stew he had. We had to have store bought Bronger stew that year. Did, did everybody know that, or did, did y'all just know that it was store bought? No, everybody knew it that year because I mean it was just. And, uh, and it was uh, that was just one of those unforgettable Kegel reunion moments. But that never happened again, huh. ever. The ground meat's always stirred several times for it's put in the fridge. It's always brought to a cool room temperature before it's ever put in the refrigerator yeah. for a while. Buried up. Yeah. Well, nowadays, I mean, most of it's cooked before Saturday morning. Right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we get up different cousins to bring meat, and they've already got it cooked up. Uh, yeah. We still grind up some. Oh, yeah, we grind it. We grind up the, the, the pork roast and, and, and chicken and turkey, but, uh, but it's already been cooked, and it's usually already cooled off. So, one of my one of my favorite Kegel reunion back when we were kids there at Greenway. There was a little old country store right across the street, and I bet you if we went over there once, oh, we went over a hundred times. Greenway store, Greenway store, and we'd go over there and buy Coca Cola's, bit of honey, yeah, 
act like we're chewing tobacco and put that bit of honey in your mouth like we think we're chewing tobacco. Yeah, a little uh, older, we all did chew tobacco a little bit. And uh, I remember getting sick on that at Kegel Union. I, I chewed my, Randall chewed some tobacco. I chewed some tobacco. I huh? Like huh? You chewed tobacco? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Hey. I remember I was, I was young and I was over next to the big old fire and got all hot with that chewing tobacco in my mouth. And I had to go over. Yeah, I might have oh, to the You, you gotta realize when we cook, Barbecue. It's not like just putting it on a on a, a barbecue grill. A smoker. We have a pit, and outside the pit, we got a big old fire burning with hickory wood. I mean, big old you know big logs of hickory wood, and we Green. got we got to take shovels and go up under there and get all the embers and coals out and throw it in that pit, and that's how we cook the meat. Back when we did green ham, the big hams, I mean, we'd put them on by 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. It may be 8 or 9 o'clock at night before we took get them off it. Yeah. And when it's rainy, it'd be nearly midnight. And uh, so we cut it down. We just do pork loins now, bone-in pork loins and, and pork loins and chicken and uh, and ribs. Started doing ribs, and uh, that's been a big hit. So anyway, but that was it's it's a it's a job, but it's all the cousins get together, have a big time, tell stories, and um, make up stories, make up stories, and and shovel out coals all day long and feed them the barbecue pit and keep it hot. Oh God! Now when I when I cooked I don't know my, that I'm gonna eat my ground that. beef yesterday with that uh, envelope of uh, onion Lipton onion soup. I put a, about a half a bottle of Worcestershire sauce in 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 with the beef, oh. so you don't have to add it here. Now this should be, and we'll we'll taste it here here, like, here directly. That same thing as that a while, and see if it needs any more salt and pepper. But uh, but you cooking with a lip, Lipton onion soup and and all the salt that's in the vegetables and, and all of it usually don't have to have much salt. Y'all are really not building a good case for the barbecue sauce just, for the way that you are reacting. It's cooking off, but like it's you got a you got the vinegar and you got the cayenne pepper and you got the uh, onion. I mean, it's a great aroma as long as your head's not right over the pot. As long as you're not the hog smelling. head, yeah. smell a vision. Usually about eleven o'clock or eleven thirty on Saturday, we uh, cook hot dogs and red hots. You slobber, you slobber it with barbecue sauce and onions. Slobber it with it? Yeah. <laughs> Tell people what, or some slobber. people, some people may not know what red hots are. I don't know. They're a sausage, it's got, it's, they're hot. It's a red hot dog. It's a red hot dog, it's got everything in it but got, the squeal. Got spices. <laughs> got some spices in it, makes them hot. McEvers has got the best red hots, you can find them. I think Engel still carries McEvers. They are the best. And, uh. But uh, but we you, do. If you like eating all natural, you probably don't want to eat one of them red hots. Yeah, they, they got sure. some red dye number fifty two. Yeah, they, they they might be a little artificial. Little Liam probably wouldn't do good eating one of them. No, them and red dye don't get along. But uh, anyway, you gonna come get a. Hot shot. I don't know if I want to get close to that stuff. It might Maybe explode. Here we go. All right. We'll get a shot in both of them there. There's the sauce. Look how beautiful that sauce is. You ain't never seen no sauce that looked that good. Now, this is when you really want to... You, you can stick your, your nose up in it, and if it burns your nose hairs off, you know it's a good batch. So. Lord. And look at here. Now you go to some restaurants and you order bundle stew and all you get is a bowl of vegetable soup. They have okra in it and butter Taters beans. Taters and butter beans. Mm -mm. That ain't bundle stew. Well that's 
I think that was part of some other places' traditions. But it's still not brought. And they used what was left behind as far as vegetables go, what they had leftovers with. Actually, well, then I they, actually saw a TV show where it was one of, it was a southern cooking yeah. show where they did the history. Brunswick stew didn't come from Brunswick. It actually, I mean, it's some, some people say it came from what, Augusta or North Augusta, South she Carolina? She did a whole history on this. Some of them say that it came from Brunswick, Georgia, and also Brunswick County, Virginia. Ah. But, but those folks in Calabash and Brunswick County, North Carolina, will claim that they have the Brunswick yeah. stew also. Absolutely. But there's just one with all the veggie stuff in it. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. We just eat that, seafood. The stuff way. from South Carolina, it's got the lima beans and all that kind of stuff but, in it. Yeah. But every time, I got to where I just don't even order Brunswick stew when I go to a barbecue joint because every time I order it, I'm disappointed because I'm always comparing it to Kegel, Brunswick stew, and it says what I'm used to. May not be what you're used to, but what's what we're used to. And I think if you ate it one time, you'd like it. Hey, Murray, come here. Stick your face in the pot. Not today. It's good for the pores. It opens them up. Mm, pores don't need no opening. But, uh, let's. Now you know why I only put about half the vinegar. I believe I would have left out half of the half. <laughs> now on the Brunswick stew, if you if you made what I made here half, you could put everything together in a crock pot in the morning and just leave it and let it cook all day. What? No, something buzzed my ear. But, uh, <laughs> Stephen's but, also got a tick. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to put this recipe that we made today, this quantity, on uh, on our site. And if you want to make, just cut it in half. If you want to make uh, half, just a crock pot full. Yeah, but if you're going to gonna feed a, a good sized family, I mean, yeah, it'll probably be what, two gallon? Gallon and a half, two yeah, gallon? Yeah. If you had a big crock pot, you might be able to fit that in there. Yeah. But, uh, but the good thing about stew, it, it freezes good. Yeah. So, freezes beautifully. So, uh, if you make too much, make too much. Put it in a freezer bag or container, freeze it. And then when you ain't got nothing to eat one night and you say, boy, some stew would be good, you'd have some stew in the freezer. How about that? How about, How about that? that? And as soon as this uh, gets well, hot, we're going to get out a bowl here directly. The same thing as that a while. And we're going to test it. All right. We done? Yeah, if we're done, and then we're going to come back and taste test here in a minute. All right, y'all. Say bye to everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Are we on? Are we on? Yum. All right, All right folks. We're back. We got the stew made, we got the sauce made. Just wanted to kind of show you what we use at the Cable Reunion. This is a 20 gallon industrial pot. What'd you say we got daddy got at the Army Navy store over there in Marietta? Over at the Army Navy store in Marietta. This old paddle here, I'll tell you a little story about the paddle. It's what we always stir the stew with. Back when I was about stir the pot. Stir the pot. He's See? good at stirring the pot. Because you know his nickname was Stick. Stick. That's Jesse Heard. <laughs> I talked to Jesse. He called me the other day. Speaking of what Jesse Heard. Stick. 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 Yeah, sure it is. But anyway, Uncle Homer, we had a we had a paddle that wasn't quite this long. It was about probably about that long and the handle wasn't quite as round. But Uncle Homer made it, it'd been around in the family for years and, uh, you know, it was kind of the prized possession of the, uh, the, the union. Daddy always kept it. And uh, I was stirring the stew and lo and behold, broke the handle. How old were you? Probably about 17, 16, 17 years old. We lived over on Cagle Road at the time. And, uh, oh, it about broke Daddy's heart. 
And he said, I can't believe it. what we're going to do now. You know, and somebody talking about getting a boat paddle or something like that. Well, anyway, before the next keg of reunion, I went, you know, well, Daddy told the story about Uncle Homer. He'd whittled that out of a piece of hickory. And maybe been at the reunion, but he'd, he'd whittled it out with his pocket knife. So he broke a Coca-Cola bottle, took the glass, and he shaved that thing down with, with the glass and got it all smooth. And uh, so I went and cut down a hickory tree that was about that big around so I could get the paddle size. And I hewed this thing out with an axe. You can see the axe mark right there. Hewed the paddle out with an axe and, and whittled this on down. He got me a piece of glass, just like um, he said Uncle Holmes did, and smooth the handle. So this has been around since 1976, 77. Long, how long this paddle has been around? We spurred to do with it ever since. But anyway, um, come on over, Murray. We're going to taste this stew. Here we go. It's going to be the big... Matthew, you... Take over for me. Be the cameraman. Make sure everything's good. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to you. Brunswick Stew. Mmm. 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 How good is it? Put it on your head. Put it on your forehead. No, put it on top of your head. Tongue beats your brains out trying to get to it. That is some good stew. It is. For us, and not you. Oh, man. Oh, man. That big old ant. Get that thing. Hey. That probably went right in my pocketbook. What <laughs> <laughs> ant is that? Not my ant. Be a big black ant. Mm. Man, this dude. Delish. You guys do good. So, uh. I feel like I'm at the cable reunion. So, so, so. <laughs> this section of. Cooking with Murphy and Dana is brought to you by Cable Auction Company. Yes, sir. Where we got, we put the action in auction. We'll have another auctioneer in the family here pretty soon. Steak and Paul. Gonna be an auctioneer. Going to auctioneer school in August. Yeah. So, anyway. You lick the ball? No, fill it up. But, uh, Cable Reunion, I'm gonna let around. We, we always sing Amazing Grace with the grandma. Daddy's mama, or grandma, or grandma, or grandpa, or grandpa, Katie. We always sung a verse or two of Amazing Grace. So, in keeping with the cake reunion traditions of the stew and the sauce, we're going to entertain, we're going to, the cake boys, the quartet and the, oh, well, it's going to be a quintet. Well, we're going to have the, 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 even the audience. Will. Our, Our live, live studio, studio audience. audience. <laughs> I'm going to be saying, we're going to sing at least a verse. We'll see how we feel at the end, or we may sing another. Who's kicking us off? All right, get started. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Gilliland, be somebody. And then the words of 
Poppy Cagle. We love you. I and love you, and don't you forget it. And we, we love, love you, you, and don't, don't you forget, forget it. it. Yay! Thanks, y'all.